Hey, welcome back, Mobility Project case study. Super athlete Drucker here, uh, looking to get more performance out of a squat, a little bit more of the deadlift. Talk about, hey man, I've been mobilizing the crap out of my hamstrings, right? Yeah. Do, do, doing the due diligence, not seeing a big effort. When we prioritize kind of our problems, one of the things we do is we always put trunk control and trunk positioning in front of stretching. Are we putting our athlete in a good position? And that's why we prioritize joint mobility in front of some of the other stretching modalities because when we are disorganized, the body has kind of its own built-in protective mechanisms. So one of the things that we see is that when an athlete when, is having a stabilization problem, so lift both legs up, yep. one of the things that you'll notice is he engage in what I call a spinal flinch, come down, and lift up again fast. What happens is he's got big strong abs, yep. he's like 1% body fat, right? This is not an abdominal strength problem, but as both legs lift up, the hip flexors attach on the pelvis, pull them forward, one more time, Boop, you see a little spinal flinch, and then he also overextends, and see if you can flatten your back, and lift your legs up. Once he's overextended and he's under load, there's no, no game, game's over, can't reclaim this position. What we want to show you is that a lot of times our body engages in some funny mechanisms. This is the end of his posterior chain range. And so, hip crease below the knee, I should be able to get straight up and down as a passive range kind of piece. So, he's missing a big chunk of change here. If we're having lunch, I can't even get my hand to my face, right? But he's a big, strong athlete, and he can work around this. So, remember, he's, he's mobilizing, mobilizing, PNFing, doing the due diligence. What we're seeing, though, is that he's kind of violating our core to sleeve uh, principle, our trunk to, you know, to, to limb. He's got to go from axillary skeleton to peripheral skeleton. And here's what happens. By definition, all functional movement works in a wave of contraction from trunk outward. Lift both legs up again, boom, legs move first, trunk moves second. So he experiences a little bit of spinal shear, L5 shears forward on L1, or on S1, and then I just, I'm overextended and I can't reclaim that position. So, so take a look at this, here's what we're gonna do. We gotta make sure that he can get stiff, and make his trunk stiff, and still breathe. Because I need that diaphragm to be able to descend, and I'm not sucking or hollowing, that's a bad cue, that basically makes it so that my diaphragm is controlling my trunk tension, that's not what I need. I need, I need to create stiffness in the trunk. So at our model around the shop here is we say butt creates position, abs create stiffness. So go ahead and squeeze your bum as hard as you can. But now, I didn't say pelvic tilt, it's just squeeze your butt. That butt, remember, pulls that pelvis towards the femur. That's what it does in real life. Now, it gets tight here, exhale, the breath in the belly, and exhale. Now his diaphragm is descending, butt is tight, he can get tight here. Now he's stiff, I can see his ribcage, but it only works if you can take another check breath here. Breath here in the belly. Now, I've got independent diaphragm control and he's still stiff. Now watch this. Relax, big breath in the belly, exhale. Now he's stiff. And when we look at his post, oh, what happened? Oh, my Lord, woo, demons out, right? No, really, we just engage in mind stretching. But you can see the difference, and the difference is that because he gets his trunk under control first, he basically breaks this short arc loop at the spine, which is telling his nervous system, hey, we got to protect the nervous system, we got to limit end range excursion, and basically, we hypothesize that it shuts the quads and hamstrings down around the femoral nerve and sag nerve. And so all we have to do is make sure our athlete has a stabilization strategy. Go and go back to where you were. Go the old old guy. Lift your legs up and flinch. Up, oh, spinal flinch. That's the wrong flinch, not the Tony Blair flinch. Flinch again. And then watch this. His body remembers and goes back to the old school. Right? And what happens is when you look at internal rotation, external rotation, we see the same thing happen. Now watch this. Big breath in the belly. Exhale. Even a bad plan is better than no plan, right? Now he's tight, and look, whoa, his internal extra rotation improves too, because it's the whole thing. How do I limit that kind of total excursion of the nervous system? This is why we've got to make sure our athletes are tight in the trunk, and we're not making those errors. Here's a nervous system error. If he loses that pelvic position, he loses the mechanical advantage, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the role is get tight. See you tomorrow.